Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode at the Peak Human Labs YouTube channel. I'm here with Dr. Sanjeev Gol and he's gonna be talking about a supplement that I don't know anything about. What What are you bringing to us today, Sanjeev? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know if how many of you know that I have a book called The 10 Must Do Biohacks of 2023. And it's actually one of the top 10 biohacks in the book. It's called Vitamin K27. And okay. I just wanted to talk about that and, and the benefits, the health benefits of this vitamin, because most people aren't aware of it. Uh, you know, most people think about vitamin uh, K as a, you know, vitamin that's useful for, for, um, for the bones, uh, but it has some other benefits as well. Um, I have never heard of vitamin K27. Is this not manufactured, but is this found naturally somewhere or is it made? What is this? Yeah. Okay. So vitamin K has two main components, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. And we're going to be primarily talking about K27, which is a type of the K2 vitamins. But K K1 is found primarily in um, in meat, for example, uh, primarily, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in meat foods. Um, but K2, and it's not as absorbable, like it's, it's hard to absorb, but K2 is actually produced by bacteria and primarily the bacteria in your gut. Okay. So it's found a lot in dairy, uh, cheeses, like fer it's fermented foods, because that's where bacteria are acting upon the food. And okay. uh, so it's found in, ch in cheeses. So there's certain like, you know, European diets, which have, have this fermented cheese, a particular type of bacteria that have produced more K2. So but what's the very, health benefit of this in particular then? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm just, just getting to it. And, okay. just, and the second more more common lo, uh, place where it's really well found is in something called natto, which is a Japanese fermented food. I think fermented soybean or so. But that's why women who have, um, you know, who take that food in have very good levels of this vitamin, uh, vitamin K27. And... Um, they think that it's you know we're going to be talking primarily about heart disease and the, and this and this vitamin but it also has huge impacts on osteoporosis and so that when we think about what are the causes of osteoporosis people are generally talking about hey you know what we need to increase our calcium intake you know that's primarily what we tell people like go and increase your calcium intake but that might not be the whole story it looks like vitamin k2 uh, may have a very big role in the bone health. And when we look at osteoporosis rates, uh, comparing Japanese women to uh, those on a Western diet, like let's say in North America, it's almost a 15 to one difference, 15 to one difference in osteoporosis rates between these two populations. And it's also a 15 to one difference in the amount of K27 that Japanese women are taking in. So they're taking in a 15 times greater amount of K27 through their diet than North American women. So I, there may be a very, this could explain the big difference. Again, it's an association. We can't, it's not proven. But if you look at the biochemical way that this vitamin acts on the body, it looks like it does have an impact on bones. So that's, that's an aside. That's a complete aside. But what I really want to talk about is atherosclerosis and atherosclerosis means uh so athero what that means athero means the arteries so these are the arteries and sclerosis means kind of like a hardening so as so we that, get leads older, to, that would lead to heart attack would it not exactly so atherosclerosis okay. leads to heart attacks heart is athero is disease and as we get older you know people are developing atherosclerosis in their coronary arteries artery disease but it's happening all over the body it's happening in your in your artery here, carotid arteries happening in your arteries in your abdomen. But it's, we're primarily concerned about atherosclerosis in the heart because when you don't have enough heart, blood going to your heart muscles, then you get a heart attack. And so, um, you know, we're very concerned about that. And that atherosclerosis, if we look at it biochemically, what's happening is it's, a, it's like a buildup of calcium uh, um, hydroxyapatite, like it's a type of hardened calcium, like the type of plaque. That's what we call a plaque. Like you want to call so it that. a plaque in your arteries. Exactly. That's what we call. Like if you wanted to look at that under, like you know, somebody opened up someone's heart and you saw that plaque, you would look like you should probably see like a whitish kind of 
hard plaque that's that's blocking those arteries and that's atherosclerosis and that's plaque and and so we want to how can we how can we make that less and so this vitamin seems to be have a very important role here uh, because what it does is that it acts upon a particular part inside the vessel wall called the let me have this here uh, matrix gla, gla protein it's it's a particular uh, uh, mga so let's call mga protein M, um, uh, protein and what it does it activates this protein and it that protein when because it because vitamin k is a, is a co, is a cofactor of an enzyme called carboxylase and so what it does is it grabs on and activates this matrix GLA protein. And that matrix GLA protein grabs free calcium that's sitting in the vessel wall and takes it out. Takes it out and pushes it out into the, into the blood area. Ah, so in effect, it actually does decrease the plaque. Exactly. It's kind of like brushing your teeth, but with, uh, you know, brushing the plaque <laughs> in your veins. Yes. It's having that. It's getting rid of it, right? Yeah, that's 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 what's pretty impressive. So it looks like this this uh, here, just this this vitamin can has a very big role in heart disease, and it, you know it could potentially de decrease the amount of plaque that's in your arteries. Um, and I just want to let people know. I think this is a very important. It's one of those biohacks. It's in my book, but just out there. Yeah, I think let, let me ask important. you, Sanjeev. Is can this be done um, prevented? Like, is it preventative? Or if you actually have the plaque, it can actually make an impact in removing that plaque? Mm. Or it's one of those things that are irreversible? Or is it both? No, I think it's not irreversible. I think okay. all plaque can be potentially, uh, can regress, you know, okay. either, you know, proper diet, exercise, all these things can change plaque. So it's not a, it's not forever. But hey, I would, I would say start now. Because we it don't is, eat vitamin K27, yeah. also called megaquinone. We don't eat that in our diet. We don't. People are not eating enough fermented foods in their diets. And so the so vitamin, food, the vitamin K2, vitamin K27 is the Colgate for your veins, guys. <laughs> it's going to yeah, get rid yeah. of the plaque in your veins. I love that. Um, yeah. Where do we get? Where do we? Where do we get it? Oh yeah, it's 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 available. Uh, mega. It's called megaquinone. Uh, you can find this. You know, pretty much any any search will find it on uh, on Amazon or a health food store. It's pretty common. Uh, I believe it's a, about a hundred milligrams per day dose. One capsule a day should be good enough uh, to give you the amount that should help with preventing the plaque from forming. But obviously, there's other factors as well. Pla you know, calcium isn't the only factor that's causing blockages in the arteries, but definitely seems to be very helpful. And it may have impact on cancer, which I'm, I'll have to go on to another episode on the effect yeah. of cancer and Alzheimer's. And I did mention already osteoporosis. So uh, this is one of those wonder vitamins. I do, I think the science backs it up and there's good evidence that we should be taking it. So that's it. Well, thank you. That's one, that's one of how many biohacks um, did you write about? Yeah, 10. So every year we're going to come up with 10. I've, okay. I've given you the, what I think are the 10 biggest things right now in the book uh top 10 must do peak human biohacks of 2023 you can find it on amazon ibooks and kobo uh just look that up you can look my name up if you can't find it and we can put the link on actually we'll put them yeah course. we'll post we'll post the link so we're gonna do every single one a week so you don't want to wait 10 weeks get those biohacks <laughs> right now yeah. brush your brush your veins guys okay take your vitamins <laughs> All right. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Dr. Sanjeev. Okay, take care. Bye. 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 Bye.